started. Okay, so today is Thursday, November, what's today? 13th. 13th. Sorry. All right, and today we're going to talk about your final portfolio. So does anybody here have any idea about a theme or the direction that they are planning on taking their final portfolio? Okay. So maybe what we'll do to start is look at what some other students have done so you guys can be inspired and decide if you want to do um, the interactive approach or I let you guys also do the printed approach. All of the materials in the module talk about doing the portfolio from an interactive approach. So if you're going to do a printed portfolio, I want you to consider the interactive elements of that portfolio as a printed piece. Okay, So just consider them a little bit differently. So let's look at some examples to get you guys um, kind of excited. So all of these are interactive style portfolios that are created using InDesign um, and using the interactive elements that we've talked about in class, like what we do with our different um, uh, exercises. Um, did any of you guys do the animated GIF yet? Did any of you do the extra credit animated GIF? GIF? Okay, so you can see there's a huge range of visual options for you guys in terms of your portfolios. So I want you to think about what's personal to you, what gets you excited about design or something that you really love um, uh, to do for fun. Some people are photographers, some people like to work on um, motion graphics. Some of you may want to do this in Flash. I'm okay with that as well. Um, but let's... Let's start with this one. Hopefully these all work. Okay. So an interactive portfolio with everything's been laid out in InDesign and the different animations have been applied. So upon page load, you see the different animations kind of happen. So let's refresh that. All of the stuff you guys have applied to your Andy Warhol exercise, right? And then there's a little direction that says click here to enter. So now we see some different things kind of pop up in animation and it directs you to this set of navigation buttons here. Okay, So these are all buttons that have been created. They're just text boxes and then a rollover element has been added which is actually really easy to do in InDesign and we can talk about that today. And um, what you do is you're actually just creating two separate looks to the same text box. So you have it as black and then when you roll over it changes to blue. And this student decided to take a very like interesting graphic typographical approach to their design. So then you can see all of the big assignments are listed. And when you click, it takes you to the assignment. Okay. And then these are also sets of buttons that pop up for easy um, navigation through this kind of pseudo website. Okay. The home button, same thing as the uh, rollovers that we saw in the main navigation, but when you click on it, it takes you back to page one in your document. And I'll teach you guys how to set this up. We go back here, we can see the next and back buttons. So multi-object state, with, like with the Calder assignment, a stack of images where they decided to zoom in and um, show you more detail of the assignment. Actually, this was probably digital drawing, yeah. So, um, this was the triptych, right? I'm drawing it up. Okay. And then you can go to the final product and you can see what it looks like all together. Okay. And the back button takes you back. You want to make sure you always have a way to get back to um, the pages so then the person can navigate through. So then let's go to the next project. So you can see you always have a way to, to get to the next project, but you could also go back to the home button and go back to that main um, navigation. This is the telling the story with line. All right, next project. Creating texture. And you can see there's still animations kind of popping up, but you always have the option to click to the next project even though the animations are happening. I highly advise this. 
if you make it so someone has to sit through a lengthy animation of something that's just like a simple motion graphic that's not really telling a big part of the story, it becomes like a little bit too long for most people to sit and wait. So then here are the letter forms, color poster, two page layout, real to abstract, you can see they did it before and after, which is fun. See so if you guys have those. And then we go back to home. I was a stand in for her on that. Uh, really? Job. Yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> cool. Okay, so that's one example. Let's look at another one. Let's do this one. Huh? Again, these are all graphics that you guys have the ability to create. This was a Skyline and a Wacom tablet and an iPod and I think these are some headphones or something. Oh, a spray uh, paint can and a book. So they were all kind of like traced in Illustrator, right? And placed in an InDesign document. All of these elements, again, were created a little text box and then they were animations were applied. And it gives you the illusion of a website. So if you go to About, you can um, see all about the student. You also have navigation links here and you can also go back home. Let's see if it works. No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's go to the next multi-object state. In this case he made it look like a book and then you can click these arrows to go to the next frames. Digital painting. So you kind of get the idea like you're looking into his sketchbook and his process, right? Telling a story with line. And so here the student is choosing to put some um, information about the project. You may want to do this because what happens is you have the opportunity to showcase your process to the viewers and you don't have to have as much writing here but if you can do it in a succinct way if someone were to look at your portfolio they can say wow this student really has a whole process in place really explaining what it's like and employers and um, people who are interested in your work really like to be able to see that you have the ability to do a process that you have a start to finish that there is a means to how you get to your um, finals final pieces letter forms, color poster, two page layout, <laughs> it's interesting, okay and real to abstract. So let's check this one out. So this legend tells you, click to view about me, click to view images, click to view animations. Right? And then you can click this to enlarge it. And then you have a little button here that will close it down. Okay. So let's click this. Okay, it talks about the student. And then you can see some images. Click image for full story. See where it takes you. No, I don't want to go there. <laughs> hilarious. Scribbler. So if you click the image, you can cycle through. I recommend that if you do something like this where you have instructions about clicking, that you keep them consistent. Because my thoughts were that if I was going to click that, I was going to be taken to an outside link again. So this must be the animated GIF that they did. <laughs> and you guys can choose to incorporate that as well. You have to export it as a, a SWIFT in order to embed it. Texture assignment. This is the story with line.
person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys are kind of getting um, the picture here. So let's look at this one. Okay. So you can add music and sounds to your portfolios. My recommendation is always make it as easy on yourself as possible. There is instructions in here about how to add um, uh, music files. I find it very glitchy and it's really, really hard to do. <laughs> and I always have students who it does not work at the very last minute. And sometimes it works, but something happened along the way and it broke. So it's up to you. But I always say make it easy on yourself. Okay, so this is where you roll over, the leaf disappears, the little rollovers, and then you can click and then it will take you to the um, assignment. Then you can scroll through and go back home. So you can see though that the, this theme of the leaves with the little bugs is consistent throughout each of the different pages that you go to. So that's the kind of thing that I want you guys to start thinking about. What is your theme going to be? How are you going to play it through to all of the pages of your portfolio? Do you guys want to see one more? Or are you good? Okay, let's see. Let's look at this one. So some students are using their letter forms as like a logo and they're creating this almost like it was a personal um, portfolio website. Okay, And you guys are welcome to do that if it's something that you want to do. This takes you through all of the assignments. Logos. That's funny that her name is Jen Lynn because my middle name is Lynn. Weird. Okay. So you guys are, can start to see that there's a lot of different options for you. So let's talk about how you can get down into the nitty gritty and actually build this. Because a lot of you are looking at it like, oh, it, you know, it probably looks like a website. But as I've been explaining to you, these are all buttons and things that you can easily do. So the main part is to show you the big scheme of it on how you can have a button that takes you to a page seamlessly so it looks like you're actually interacting um, kind of like in a website format. Do you guys have any questions so far? Can you show up where you did uh, Actually, I don't, let me see if I have them anymore because most of the other instructors are asking students to focus on the interactive elements. I'm probably one of the only ones who teaches this class that that doesn't um, as like its sole purpose because I feel like there's benefits in doing a printed in, uh, a printed portfolio as well because most of you guys don't really have that much experience with um, printing and um, kind of going through the steps of thinking about how something's going to lay together and, and bind together um, to be an actual book. So hold on, let me see if I have some in here. Under the picture, if they click here for example, they turn it to print. Can you push the button? Oh yeah. Thank you. That's why I have you guys here. Tell me. Okay, here we go. So if you do the printed portfolio, you would turn in something like this where you would actually have all of the different pages because you're not going to be able to turn in an interactive um, portfolio that I can interact with and see but you'll turn in a PDF of how it would lay out with pictures of your full um, portfolio put together okay so let me scroll through here so this student um, probably found a mixture of like pre-made binding or made this themselves where they just took screws and then they probably found this semi-transparent um, paper with uh, rose petals pushed into it or whatever and then they decided to bind everything together that way. 
So you can see here's the cover, and that's what it looks like when it's underneath that um, semi-transparent floral paper. They have a table of contents, which you have to have if you're going to do a printed. You have kind of like a pseudo table of contents when you make a navigation and an interactive with um, you have your different page numbers. Everything's listed out. Introduction. And then here's the drawing digitally. Digital painting. Telling a story with line. Creating texture, color poster, this is the tutorial. So you don't have to put your tutorial in, but if you wanted to, um, do it, showcase it somehow you can. Letter forms. And then the student is choosing to put some information about the assignment and then also showcasing their process by highlighting their sketches and their thumbnails and everything. Two page layout. Metamorphosis was an old assignment that we used to have. Animated GIF. And then it ends with their website. So in the case of a book like this, the student probably printed, it kind of looks like a square format, maybe a little bit, yeah, maybe it is. So decided to print square format to fit this binding and thought about how they wanted it to work. Then they printed it out probably with everything just on one page, is my guess. So it was like one clean page stacked on top of another page. It wasn't double-sided. So then when you flip through the book, like that. Okay. So let's look at another one. Okay. So this booklet was created using a spiral binder, which we actually have for you guys to use if you're interested. And it's in the little room in the DAC lab where the teachers um, have all their supplies. And if you ever want to use it, um, you have to make sure that um, somebody is in the DAC lab usually, but then I actually recommend that you would bind everything together here in class. So if you think ahead of time and you want to use the spiral binder, come to class, um, what is it, the week of, uh, the evening of the fourth when it's due, the portfolio isn't due until um, that night. And actually, if you're doing a printed portfolio, you would turn in the PDF, you know, with the pictures and everything. So you have time to like have everything ready to go, bind it, take a picture of it, put it in the PDF, and then turn it in at 10 o'clock or at 9.50 when it's due. Then the day of our final, that is when, that's December 11th, that's when you present it in class. But everything is due December 4th. Okay, so you can see here. So the student thought about what is the cover going to look like as a whole, okay? Versatile dog design. And so they have this cute little dog that looks like a pointer, so I like it. Um, consistency with a table of contents. And then you can see information about the assignment and you can see the actual um, scribbler drawings that he's doing. Oh, look, it's a little German short-haired pointer. It's so cute. Okay, so then digital painting. You can see there's a consistency where as this book were to open, you would have on this side a little strip that says digital painting. And he's left plenty of room here for the page to be trimmed in half and for the spiral binding. Because you have to think, the spiral binding is usually takes up about an inch or so, maybe a half inch on each side, so you want to make sure you have enough margins. So all of these things you have to think about when you're doing your design. And then you have your page numbers consistent. See, he kind of has like a dog and hunting thing throughout all of his work, so it's fitting that he chose that. Color posters. Letter forms. 
failed to abstract. And then he added pictures of his dogs, or dog. Why are these like number of things that have to be in there? It's just all the assignments. All the big assignments. You don't have to have the exercises. And then your tutorial, because it's a midterm and it's a video, you don't have to have that in there. And then your animated GIF, it, only if you wanted to add it in, you could. But most of you guys are probably just doing the rocket ship. But you can see here, your printed portfolio doesn't have to be a book. In this case, I'm sorry I won't load, but these are cards that came out that had all of the information about the various assignments in this little um, old school camera case. Okay. Again, this is a spiral bound um, booklet with a thicker spiral and you can see this changed a little bit but you can see that he thought about what size he wanted how he wanted the binding to be what's the format gonna be and in this case the student probably thought about things kind of uh, being printed back to back okay so that's really good because then you don't have a lot of extra white pages. So when the student is printing, that means that when you're opening the book, you would, just like a normal book, you'd have information on all of the pages of the book, okay? Table of contents, they have sketches. And then you have to think about if you've run out of um, information and pages, whenever you print a book, there's always going to be four pages that you have to fill. So everything comes in fours when you're doing a book. One, two, three, four. So sometimes if you have to print, say, three pages, you have to think, okay, so I have, I have a cover and I have two insides and, and then I have this back cover. So what are you going to use to fill it up? Right? So you always have to think in in fours when you're talking about doing pages front to back. Let's see if this opens. I think this is broken. And it's not printed either. So this student's actually talking about um, the final portfolio, their brainstorming and sketches. And you can see they actually really thought about what the whole thing was going to look like with a mock-up of the binding. And then again, the page layouts here. Okay. Do you guys have any questions about that? Is that a good, like, little brief look at some printed ones, too? So how, consensus, what are you guys thinking with... The whole interactive versus printing. What are you guys leaning towards? Interactive. interactive. What about you, Hilma? Interactive. Printed. Adam? Uh, okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to focus on interactive tonight. Um, next week, we're going to have all day to work on the portfolio. So I highly recommend you come to class because it can be really, really complex and some of you guys are going to want to execute certain ideas. And we have three weeks to do it, but we have Thanksgiving break. And let's be honest, how many of you guys are really going to work on it? So if you come to class next week already with an idea and your stuff kind of like already mapped out, we can really work on interactivity and I can come around and spend a lot of time with you guys, okay? I really recommend it. Okay, so let's talk about interactive portfolio. So this is a file that I made last semester and I may just start from scratch. Let's see what we did.
Okay, so let's go to interactive um, and let's look at our preview. I want to see what we did with this. And I want to look at the whole spread. Document mode. <laughs> I think we did some crazy stuff here. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this. Really simple home page, okay, where we have navigation buttons with rollover. Not all of them are working. And we go to our portfolio. And then with our portfolio, we have various links that we can click to to get to different pages. And about me, process, contact, okay. We don't want that. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Okay, so just like all documents, we start from scratch and we think about what the size is that we want for our um, document. When you do like an interactive portfolio, think about screen resolution. So you can think of, you can think of these in terms of um, like pixels instead of inches. So maybe we do 1070 pixels. and make it a little bit bigger, okay? So then what we wanna think about, actually, we wanna turn facing pages off. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. So the main thing is to think about how many pages you're going to need in your architecture for your um, interactive portfolio. Um, keep it simple. Okay, and make it easy to navigate. So I'm just gonna start creating some buttons and kind of map it out. I recommend that you guys actually make like a little um, architecture tree and give yourselves some guides and how you're going to uh, create your portfolio. This is the kind of thing that you would do if you ever do um, website design work or even just um, helping to manage it, but you're going to think you're going to have a home page, top navigation, right? And then you're going to have, on your home page, you're going to have um, your main navigation, so you're going to say, about me, and you're going to have portfolio, and you're going to have your process, if you're interested, or whatever else. And then you, maybe you have your contact information. Okay? So then from there, you can say if you're about me, maybe it's just one page. You only have one page about yourself. But maybe in your portfolio, you have each one of your assignments, which is abstract, digital painting, digital drawing. I'm just doing these really fast for you guys, but color poster, right? And then maybe you have, within each of these pages, you have something else. So maybe you have your sketches. Okay? So you kind of just build off a little tree so you know what to expect. And then in your process, maybe you just have the one page where you're talking about your process. And then in your contact information, maybe you have, um, it's actually like a page that has information um, about how to contact you, and then maybe you also have a link to your blog in there, okay? Or whatever you want. So if you kind of start by making a little like architecture tree, then you can really plan out how you want to do it and think how many pages are am I actually going to be making. So then the next part is to sit down and actually construct it. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool here and I'm just going to make some really rough buttons. Take my text tool and I'm going to write. right here and let's make this font big so we can also what we're doing turn it up center it okay so this is our home page and then we want to make some buttons so I always recommend that you have main navigation buttons that stay with your pages at all times 
I think it just makes it for a better um, navigability across your site. So what did we say here? We have about, and I'm going to do Command B, and I'm going to center my text here, my text frame options, and I'm going to fill in my button with blue. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And what else did we write? Portfolio. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to write process. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to write contact. Okay. So now let's turn these into buttons and actually have them start to go some places, okay? So um, let's work with portfolio because I think this is going to be the most beneficial for you guys. So we want your portfolio button to take you to your portfolio page. So what I would do is then think about every one of these pages as actual real pages in your document. So I'm going to create a new page and on that new page I'm just double clicking that so I can steal it. This new page is our portfolio page. And perhaps what we want is different um, little individual graphics that we can showcase like small windows to our various assignments. I'm going to duplicate these. So maybe we fill these in with um, like little zoom-ins of our projects. I'm just command D or placing you know the images in. You guys all know how to do this. In this case I'm doing it with um, a box Oops. We want to highlight the box before we do it. So if you select the box, then click it, it will fill it in. And you can move it around within there. Okay. So let's go back to page one. So if you guys are going to keep your navigation buttons consistent on every page, I recommend that you utilize what is known as master pages. How many of you guys have ever used master pages? Okay, so three of you guys have. So master pages basically is a master page that will, anything that you do to that master page, it will replicate to all of the pages assigned to it. So let me show you. Here you have your A master. Why is there two pages there? So for A master, you can see that there's a letter A on each of these pages. That means anything that's applied here will automatically be replicated to any other A page that you make. So I'm going to take this whole navigation button that we've made and I'm going to copy it, Command C. Actually, I'm going to cut it, Command X and paste it by pasting in place and there's two pages because when I first built it sorry all right I'm gonna paste it there then well technically it should work I think what's happening is when I built this with two pages to start, it's given our A master two pages, so it's not very happy with me. Okay, so now when I place it here, you can see these buttons are suddenly popping up on these other two pages in your pages portfolio. So now any changes I make to these will automatically happen on these other pages as well. Highly recommended. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to create these uh, to be buttons. So let's work with our portfolio button. 
I'm going to go to Interactive, Buttons and Forms, and we're going to turn Portfolio into a button. So we want this button, I'm going to hit the plus sign, we want it to go to a particular page. In this case, we want it to go to the portfolio page that we set up on page two. So we want it to go to page two of two. Now we want to create a rollover. And what you can do is you can double, or you can turn this little eyeball on here and it enables the rollover feature of this button. So now anything I do to this button right here will change and become the rollover. So we're going to turn it pink. Now when I click on it, it should work. So let's preview it. Oh, I can't preview master page. So let's go to page one. So now when I roll over, it turns pink. InDesign has it all set up for you. Remember, everything that you do that's interactive, you have to look at it in preview, or otherwise it's not, you can't see it. That's going to be incredibly frustrating sometimes. You'll be like, I swear it worked before. Also, if we want this to link to page two properly, which we can test right now, we have to make sure we're looking at the entire document because you're going to move off that page and you need to move to another page. So you need to make sure this is clicked. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will link. Didn't link. Let's hit play and start over. This sh should fix it. Now when we click. No, didn't work. So let's start again. Let's go back to master pages. Go to page two. And hit enter. Okay. Now are you going to work? Now we go to page one. Preview. Old document. Press play. Portfolio. Oh no, it works. Okay. So little things like that, we have to double check and make sure things are in place. It's, it's gonna happen. So now you guys know how to make a button, take you to a different page and you know how to make it into a rollover, right? So let's think, what else are we going to need to do? Do you guys want to apply any, want to apply any animations or we've kind of gone over that in class? Okay, let me think. What do we do for this one? Same thing. Ah, I know what we should talk about. So we have these buttons, right, that take you to these different pages. How do, but how do we get back to the home page? So I recommend that you create um, a home page as well. And you can have your home pages, they don't have to start on the home page, uh, or your home page button doesn't have to start on the home page. You can just have it start on the uh, various pages that it lands on. Um, so for instance, on the portfolio page, maybe here you have a little home page. And so maybe we make it. an actual little house and we fill it with green okay so then you have like a little home page button and I'm going to group it so it stays together and then let's apply a button and we want to go uh, first page that's good and let's apply a rollover. And maybe for our rollover, we need to change it to red. Okay. Rolls over and takes you home. So was there anything in particular in these other examples that you guys 
uh, would like to see how to do. Let's close these. So in this case, in this case, when you click these buttons, an animation happens and a line shoots out and lines up under it. And then when this new page loads, it all looks it looks like it's all one page, but it's not. Okay, so this this all takes you to a new page. So let's go let's go back to sketches here. This page loads, and on this page is a multi-object state with different buttons that have been applied. So just like the Calder exercise, when you had the buttons that take you front or back, do you guys want to go over that again? Yes, no, no, no. Okay. It's totally fine. I don't want to waste your time. I want to make sure we're utilizing them properly. Mm, let's figure out how we can make things disappear. Does that sound good? So if we roll over it. I can't quite remember how, so let's talk about that. So let's take this guy. Actually, let's make a new shape. So I think that if we ap actually apply an animation to have it disappear, and then it turns into a button underneath. So if we go to interactive animation, we're going to open up the animation panel. Oh, look, it named it circle for us. Why, thank you. OK, so we're going to choose a preset, which is really cool. Everything's here for you. And we want it to disappear on rollover. And we don't want it to loop. We don't want to reverse. Yes, we want. Let's see if we can reverse it on roll off. So then uh, that it makes me assume it's going to reappear. If it looped, would it just disappear, come back, disappear? Probably. And then it would give your viewer a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's check this out. Oh. Yes. We. So, but let me, sh let me show this again. So what happens is, see how it kind of disappear when I, when we're loading it? But it's not staying now, but before it was. It's doing the opposite of what you want. Yes. It's like confusing itself. So let's stop this for a second. And let's reverse that and see what happens. Wait, what, what, what do you want to do? When I roll over it, I want it to disappear. But it's appearing when I roll over it now. Actually, and then it turns off. That's not what we... Let's close this for a second. So I unchecked on page load, so that will be good. And then events. Roll over self. Properties. Okay. It didn't come back. I. Uh. <laughs> See, this is the kind of thing you have to kind of play around with it. So let's change it from two frames. Let's see what happens. Nope. From current appearance. Like it kind of works, but then it doesn't. Let's try this. Portfolio. Then it doesn't come back. Okay. Anyway. You guys get the point. It's very tricky to play around with this. <laughs> See, now it's like... So if you keep it simple for yourself, 
It makes it so much easier. Buttons doing like multi-object states where you have images stacked and you have the buttons that shuffle through is really good. And then the whole time you guys are designing your portfolio, I want you guys to think about the different things that we've talked about in class, right? Design, composition, color, um, make it easy to read, make it easy to interact with, make it interesting and creative and something that you guys are going to be proud of. Okay? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, if we had a setup like this, you know, with the squares with the images in it, uh, how would you have it where the image changed inside of the square? Um, so... That's a good chance. So you would say when you roll over it, you want it to change? Or just where it did it on its own. I just like cycle through the two or three images. So the idea would be that you could technically apply animations to various images and have them just like appear. Um, and then the other thing you could do is actually embed a Swift file if you were to have created this elsewhere. Like a, if you had created an animated GIF, exported it as a Swift and placed it in here, you can also do it that way. Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you could do a rollover, which could be just as interesting. So all you have to do is, we're going to want to go to, let's create a new page here. I don't know what, what I was thinking about is they could preview the contents of that page, you know. Yeah, so you could do something where you have a rollover instead. I'm just doing this so we have like a, we know we're going to the right page. So if we turn this into a button, we're going to need it to be a button to take us to um, page three, which is our Ray Bans page. So let's say page three. And then we want to create a rollover. And then for this rollover, maybe you do, you place in and like a little um, precursor to what you're going to see. So. I thought it would place in there, but maybe not. Oh, there we go. Maybe this will work better. There we go. Okay. So now when we roll over, you can get an idea that way. And so that's kind of a fun way to show people that if you click, because otherwise these just look like images, right? So if you have like a way for people to roll over and they, they see that they're clickable, that's good. Um, and then when we click on this, and it should take us to page three. Let's go back, make sure this button is set up right. Oh, see this changed back to one. So make sure you hit three and then you hit enter when you're done. And then let's take this down page three. And make sure you save as you go. I haven't saved at all. Portfolio, Ravens, and then it takes you out. Okay. So let me show you guys this. In the interactive portfolio page, you can see here this is actually um, an interactive portfolio example that when you click, stuff animates and comes forward. Um, but here is a list of all kinds of tutorials for you. This is the same thing as for your story with line. So there's all kinds of animations that you can learn about. Multi-object states, intro to buttons, easy animations. Um, converting a GIF into a Swift file. So then if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to embed your Swift file into your portfolio, you could if you wanted to put your um, animation in. Um, how to place media which is essentially um, if you wanted to place any sort of video or music files and stuff like that. Um, page transitions. So in some cases you can have various um, things happen in between pages. So you can have like a, a page, uh, 
no, what is it called? The page curl, interactive page curl. Um, you can also have like a fade where as you click the next page, you kind of have things like fade together. There's always like this little lag that happens with too many animations. Um, so if you watch these videos, you can kind of get it here. This is one that I made this as an example for students. And this has the page curl. But then when you have these things kind of happen, you see there's always like this little lag in between. And then timing panel, motion path. So this is going to tell you guys, teach you a little bit about how you can edit the motion path when you're animating something. Did we talk about that in this class? Let's, let's do that right now. Because I think um, some of you guys may want something to be on a motion path that's like directly doing something. So maybe when we're on this page, we want our home button to kind of move in onto the page right when someone gets here. So we're going to an, apply an animation. And this is called button two. And then we want it to, uh, we don't want it to move. We want it to fly in from the left. Okay. This is your motion path. Just like in your pen tool when you actually have like a vector path, if you make changes to this, this little home button is going to follow what happens. So you can make edits to it. Let's see, how do we do that? You can shorten and lengthen the motion path. Okay. And I believe we can actually tweak the path itself. So let me figure out how we do that. I forget. Well, it disappears when we do that. Oh, we can also convert things to a motion path. I forgot about that. So let's take this guy and let's trash its current animation. And I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to create my own motion path. Okay. And now, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to select both this pen tool path that I made and this red circle and I'm going to convert it to a motion path. Let's see if we can then fly in from the bottom. No, we don't want that. just watch it. Oh, there we go. So you can see that the arrow here is pointing down so you know which direction it's going to go. So because I created this own motion path, it automatically moves in the direction of that path. I don't have to apply anything to it. And it's going to say custom. But you can still change um, when the animation occurs, so if it was clicked, maybe it would move. Yeah, one for the home button too, right? Yeah. Wait, I said after click. And you can tell when an animation has been applied because you have this little graphic right here, these three little dots. So if it, you click it, it moves again. There we go. Preview panel, hit play. 
that loads and now when I click this it moves out of the way. So maybe you do something like that to make people find your buttons hidden underneath. Okay, so do you guys all feel confident in this kind of stuff? Yes or no? But you can see how you're going to have questions as you're working on it. So what are we going to do next week? And we're going to come to class ready to... To what? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Also, <laughs> next week is Pumpkin Pie Day. Ooh. And we have guest speaker Tom Hinkle coming. And did I tell you guys about him? Okay, so Tom Hinkle is really cool. He's a friend of mine who I met through AIGA. And he, all the friends that have come so far have been through them. Um, but he actually got, like, basically found this job for me that I'm currently at because he thought I would be a great fit. And he works for a printing company called V3 Printers. And they're based in... Um, in Oxnard, and he's going to bring all kinds of cool printed samples for you guys. And he brings all kinds of really fun stuff for you guys to look at. And he'll bring press sheets, and he'll bring, he'll probably bring some stuff like Santa Clinic does because we're one of his clients. Um, he brings posters that they print in house, and so you guys get to keep whatever posters you want when he brings them. So there was some like cool holographic posters that he brought last time. There was like this crazy Katy Perry ones. There was a really cool Simpsons poster that everybody was like fighting over it. <laughs> so he usually brings samples. They print everything. They print um, on digital press. They print on um, lithographic presses, which is offset printing. And then he'll talk to you guys about the differences in um, types of printing. He'll also show you how like packages are printed and how they are printed completely flat and then they're use a uh, die cut cuts them out and then they're folded together using like machinery or sometimes stuff is folded by hand and he's a he's a cool guy so i think you guys will um, like meeting him so if you guys don't have any other questions about this let's talk about your two page layouts does that sound good okay <clears throat>